Hey, what's up guys? Today I am continuing with Pokemon Light Platinum and as you can see I've leveled up most of my Pokemon and I've evolved some as well. It took me quite a while to do that but I finally got them! Yay! But anyway, we'll get on with this and I've got to keep speaking for 25 minutes I don't know if I could do that I might just give up nah I can't be asked to give up so let's just do this I'm also gonna start after this after I finish Light Platinum well probably before I finish it actually I'm going to be doing a, it's a new Pokemon series but with one of my friends also he has a YouTube channel as well called HOBO21 he does Pokemon videos and we're gonna both do like a collaboration with a Pokemon game called Pokemon Reborn I started playing a bit of it and it's really difficult because for starters you've got a level cap and once you get to level 20 or your Pokemon to level 20 they stop obeying you and you have to get the gym badge for them to actually obey you uh, just, um, and there's not many Pokemon at the start the only good Pokemon I've properly found was Noivern, not Noivern, Noibat, or something like that. The pre evolution of Noivern, I'm sure it was Noibat, Noibat, or whatever. Um, you can, it's from generation 1 to 6, so you can get um, uh, any Pokemon, any starters from 1 to 6. And the good thing is, though, they have hidden a bit. They can have hidden abilities. So if you want their hidden ability, save it before you get the Pokemon. And if you don't get the hidden ability, re just reset it. Reset the game. Start where you saved. What should be in the that room? And when you've done that, bam! <laughs> like I started with Froki. It was a pretty good Pokemon. The reason I started with Froki was because of its hidden ability, Protein, what some of you should know. <coughs> but if you don't know what Protein is, whatever the move Froki uses, it becomes that type. So it always has um, more power than the move, because it's got the same type advantage thing, whatever it's called, I can't remember. <laughs> but yeah and apparently with the gym leaders when you get to the like a grass one and you've picked a fire but I picked water so that's just gonna be difficult for me. Apparently if you have a, f a fire or flying they can adapt to that and it's they can easily uh, eat your Pokemon and apparently it'll be harder than usual gym, bag, gym battles what hopefully is true because I'm looking forward to going against the first gym, gym battle but of course I have to reset my game when I, because I started playing it like I said but I was going to play it with one of my friends so I have to reset it I'm going to start again at the same time and it's going to be quite tedious to do that all again but at least I'll know where I'm going I'll be able to get my uh, Neuburn back hopefully but it's got super really bad moves it's got Leech Life what's like 20 damage I think it's got Tackle it's got Screech and it's got Super Sonic and it's difficult to level up uh, that Pokemon just because of its attacks. Unlike this game, where 
where you've got like TMs you can find on. I don't think there's any TMs in the general region of where you start. So you're gonna have to level up a Pokemon that has bad attacks. <laughs> what makes the game even harder? And the first play, the playthrough I'm doing, I haven't actually. Um, got knocked out with any of my well, some of my Pokemon have got knocked out. Like a level three has, and my Noibat because its moves suck. But besides that, I haven't properly been wiped out. I've I've at least had one Pokemon still alive, and that's my Froakie. I nearly, I was so close to getting all my Pokemon knocked out. I had. Froki and my Noibat, or Noibat was knocked out, and I had like 20 um, hit points left, HP left, and I was poisoned, and I literally had to run to the Pokemon Center, and I, when I went in there, I only had 1% health left. That was so annoying, because, and there's most Pokemon poison you as well. Like, on this game, loads of trainers are bug trainers. And they poison you, paralyze you, put you to sleep. It's just really annoying. And on Pokemon Reborn, you don't get much money. You literally hardly get any. You get like 5,000 I think, what's well, pretty good, but then after that, if you spend all of it, that's it. You It's going to take ages to get that money back. But after like the first gym leader, it should um, come back. Or you should get more, start getting more money and racking up all them dollars. That bling bling dollar, 360, 420 blazer, shit or whatever. Uh, as you can see, I'm taking on the gym leader now. It's not difficult at all. Even my my Tien is more powerful than that Vespaquen, so my Charmeleon must be like level 25, I think it is. I'm not sure. But I end up catching most Pokemon I want. I think. No, oh, no, I'm thinking of a different game. But because I started Pokemon Gold, I um, because it looked really enjoyable, so I just decided to play it. And I didn't get round to. Well, I have recorded like the third episode of this and the fourth episode. But as I need to narrate it, I was just like, oh, I'll leave that till tomorrow. Play Pokemon Gold. Today I've started narrating it, and I've literally, that's really it, and then I need to, as soon as I completed it, I'll move on to um, Yu-Gi-Oh! probably, because I finally downloaded Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, and it is enjoyable, but I thought I was a pro at Yu-Gi-Oh! I never lost on Millennium Duels. I hardly ever lost on Dueling Network. But when it came down to this, it's like all the pros decided to um, go on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro. And especially when they're using like new archetypes. Like there's one archetype called UA. I think it's Ultimate Athletics. I think, and it's like you summon a monster, you summon one of them, a level 4, you send it back to your hand to special summon another, um, even more powerful one, like a level 5, and if you have their field spell down, every time you special summon a monster, all monsters gain 500 more attack points. So, say you've got like a 2,000, I think the highest is 2,500, 
um, attack points. When you when you put the field spell, it's three thousand. Do it again. Just keep doing that. Keep the special summoning. Luckily, it's only once per turn though. But I managed to. There's three new decks that I'm tr trying to get in with, and I will do the deck profile and me doing a match with the deck profile I'll probably lose because I'm not used to this game yet with all the pendulum summonings and stuff I still think they're pretty broken <laughs> and there's um, crystal beasts weren't that good when they first came out but there's a pendulum card that when it's uh, put in the pendulum zone all all crystal beast monsters are unaffected by or cannot be targeted by card effects so I'm there with like dimensional prison fiendish chain but I don't have a mirror force that I really need and I shouldn't and when I was playing against someone using this I had a mystical space typhoon I could have destroyed it I think I think it's how I could have destroyed it I'm not sure but if I could I messed up badly it, I literally ended up losing because of it and that was annoying that was just ugh but besides that I my favourite deck so far uh, uh, Satella Knights I met, they're really good and you can make a Sat I even invented a Satella deck it was a Satella burn so actually my burn deck with the St uh, Satella Knight monsters and there's one monster if it's summoned they lose a thousand um, life points and with some of their effects, one of them's like special. When you summon this card, you can special summon one card from your graveyard in defense mode. And if you uh, special summon that card, the one I was talking about, I can't remember what it's called, it deals a thousand damage. And then you can XYZ and to keep doing it. And then there's another card. It's it requires three level four stellar monsters uh, or satellite monsters and it requires three of them and once it's XYZ summoned or XE summoned as some people put it you um you return every card on the field to the owner's hand that is pretty good and it's quite easy to summon because there's stuff like when you summon this card you can send one Satella monster from your deck to the grave one was like you, when you summon this you can special summon one monster from your grave and I find that deck really enjoyable but it's it's literally like Constellas it's the new Constella deck really kind of in a sense but without like the annoying X Y. Well, there are annoying X Y Zs, but um, it doesn't it doesn't have the effect of when you detach one X Y Z material. Um, if you detach one X Y Z material, all Constellar monsters get uh, are immune to card effects. That is what I didn't like about Constellas. That's what I found overpowered about them. And on Millennium Duels, everyone used Con well, a lot of people used Constellas. They're like the second most used, besides so Dragon Rulers. And then for another one of the decks I use is Shadows. I didn't know how powerful they were until I started playing with them. They're all about flip effects, and it's like fl if you flip this card, you can either send a uh, special summon a card from the graveyard, just and if this card is destroyed, 
add one shadow to your hand from your deck was quite a few of them oh my mic just turned off my hand uh, probably a bit of rustling there but still and again with um, another one is burning abyss when I first saw that deck I copied it from uh, one of my friends who did a tournament I don't know how he won with it I had to make major modifications for me to actually do well with it like dark arms dragon I added was pretty easy to summon um, black cluster soldier envoy of the beginning chaos sorcerer and oh, I don't know um, and then there's an XYZ, it's, it's got 1,500, or 1,000 attack, and 2,500 defense, but its ability is you can send one to three cards to the graveyard, and for every card that is sent you gain 500 attack points. And the good thing about that, if you switch it to attack mode, use its effect, attack, it goes back into defense mode. Because it's a, it's um, attack goes back to its original attack net um, at the end of your turn. And besides burning abyss and shadows and stellar knights, I also use pendulum scraps. It's quite a simple. It's one of the simple pendulum summoning ones. But precise, even though it's pendulum, it's kind of simple. For a pendulum summoning, it's simple. But if you have no idea what you're doing, then there's no point of using pendulums. Because they're so annoying and broken. <laughs> like I said in my other video, there was one time he summoned like four level 8 monsters. Because he had with his pendulum summoning and he managed to get a, managed to get a star eater and TG librarian and he just got upstart goblin used that got another monster and it just got really annoying so I gave up <laughs> uh, but the thing I don't like about Yu-Gi-Oh Pro is the every time you play I always get like game crashes and the game freezes while you're in the middle of a duel against someone and it's just aggravating and it just got on my nerves like I met someone there and I was like playing with I was dueling him he was using the ultimate athletics <laughs> I was like oh my god and Oh, and there's another deck I actually use, thinking about it. It's like an upgrade from my Wind Up deck. It's um, Wind Up Quasar Dragon. It's pretty simple to use. All you have to do is special summon a... Or special summon TG uh, Striker while they have a monster. And then you can special summon... TG Warwolf, and then you've got your T uh, Synchro Summon TG Fairy, I think it's called, and then summon uh, a level three and a level four, I think. Wait, so that's five. That's eight. Yeah. So all you need is to summon Rat, and then special summon Shark, and then you've got all the necessary abilities for uh, qua shooting Quasar Dragon and then you can attack two times unless you get another level 1 monster summon that with shark reduce, uh, reduces shark level by 1 and then you can attack three times what is, what is pretty overpowered <laughs> Because if he's got one card on the field and that's Mirror Force face down, you can attack three times 
and if he activates Mirror Force the first time, he has the ability to negate it, and it just destroys everything. It, unlike um, shooting, uh, shooting Star Dragon, I think it is. Uh, it's harder to summon, but it is worth it. Because shooting Star Dragon, you have to reveal the top five cards of your deck, and depending on how many tuner monsters you get, that's how many cards you, or how many tuner monsters you get, is how many times you can attack. But the downfall to that, if you don't get a single tuner monster, you can't attack with that card. And that is the downfall of it. But besides that, it's pr it's a pretty good card if you ask me and I will upload some duels from that game in the near future and as soon as I find out how to um, properly record my 3DS with good gameplay because I don't want it to be like shaky iPhone um, standards like uh, I want it to be kind of good, good enough for people who watch it, and I'll I'll upload three uh, matches in one video, depending on how long it goes on for, but it won't go on like for 20 minutes like this. <laughs> but. I did a road to a hundred win streak. At the minute, I'm on a 82 win streak. So I'll upload three video or three battles in one video. And I should have enough to keep me going for a while with this. Also, I'm trying to get Pokemon of the Week up, but it's proving quite difficult. <laughs> so every time I input the Pokemon of the Week picture it decides to crash the whole thing <laughs> but besides that as soon as I get that working I'll upload it maybe I'll upload it when I upload this video like as soon as this video is uploaded and done I'll start working on the Pokemon of the week video and I'll give you a clue, it's probably one of my favourite Pokemon to use in a 3v3 battle, which you'll be seeing soon, hopefully. People, people who watch this will see which one of my favourite. And then, I've already found Week 2's Pokemon, another Pokemon I constantly use in 3v3s. But, besides them two, the third Pokemon I use is just random. I could use, I sometimes use Breloom as a third Pokemon, I sometimes use Latios, I hardly use another Legendary, because one Legendary, yeah okay that's fine, but two, I find a bit stupid. I like to give people a chance, because if I played with all three Legendaries, like Kyogre, the one I was going to, I'm not going to spoil Pokemon of the Week. But uh, the one, one of the Pokemon that I use, and probably Arceus or something like that. And ugh. oh, and another thing, I'll be doing a Pokemon giveaway. Any uh, people who've subscribed and liked the video, we, uh, if you comment your, uh, what you call it, your friend code. I will add you on there and give you one free Pokemon, whatever you like, because I'm so nice. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I'll do. And the video is nearly coming to an end. Just hope my mic's not being stupid, because at the minute my mic is like at the just under the keyboard, and everyone here is like me typing. Luckily I don't type in the video, but yeah, I just, it's quite stupid, you can hear like the rustling of stuff, like the moving around of the laptop, so I'm going to get a proper mic soon, disable this one, 
news the other one I get and hopefully I'll get a um, uh, Xbox 360 capture card or something then I can upload Xbox Xbox videos like